why God did not preserve Hadith. This question that why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not preserve the Hadith is wrong. Allah clearly mentions in the Quran in Surah Hijr chapter number 15 verse number 9 that we have revealed, we have done zikr and we will guard it from corruption. This zikr the scholar says includes the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran and also to the Prophet, whatever the Prophet says is not from his mind, it's a wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The wahi which is exactly the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Quran and the wahi which he repeated in his own, in the words of the Prophet but not in the Quran are called Qudsi, Hadith Qudsi and which Prophet repeated in his word are the other Hadith. So in short the Quranic verse of Surah Hijar chapter 15 verse number 9 that we have revealed the zikr and we shall guard it from corruption includes the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Yes, I do agree with you that the level of preservation of the Quran is different than the level, the level of preservation of the Hadith. For example, the Quran has been preserved in the highest level. The Hadith, there are different types of Hadith. The highest level of preservation of the Hadith is the Mutawatir Hadith. In the Mutawatir Hadith means every hadith that has been narrated by umpteen numbers of people in each generation. That means not one sahaba, there are many sahaba who repeated the same hadith of the Prophet. In the next generation, in the tabain, there were many tabain who repeated the same, not one, two or three or four, many umpteen numbers. Then in tabi tabain, umpteen numbers. So at every level, at every generation, if there are umpteen number of people who narrated that hadith, it is called as mutawatir hadith. So all the hadith are mutawatir, all those hadith in which there are umpteen number of people at each level, not one, two or three, they are called as mutawatir hadith. Mutawatir hadith of two types, mutawatir in words and mutawatir in meaning. Mutawatir in words is the highest level of preservation. The Quran is of that level. Quran, all the Quran, today there are many huffas, but if you want who taught you the Quran, he will tell my teacher taught, my teacher's teacher taught him and then it goes back to the Sabah and to Allah, to the Prophet then to Allah. So this is the highest level where you will find several places, several people. Today there are million people who can testify the Quran. The million who fast, previous, there were 100,000, then 10,000, then there were many Sabahs who knew by heart. So Quran is the highest level of preservation in words, exact. Then you have the Mutawatir Hadith with words, next level. And then you have Mutawatir in meaning. In meaning it is the same. Then you have the Mashur Hadith, the famous Hadith, in which there are few people who have narrated every level, maybe three, four at every level. Mashur Hadith. Then you have the Ahad Hadith, or the Garib, only one person. At some level, one person. Or in one level, maybe many, but in the chain of narrator, that one level, only one person, so it becomes the Ahad Hadith. So there are levels of preservation. And these are the number of narrators, based on the number of narrators in the Musallas al-Hadith, in the science of Hadith, it gives you the level. If every level, so many people narrating, it becomes Mutawatir, highest level. The words are exactly the same, every narrator. 50 narrators, 10 narrators, 20 narrators, every time narrating, same words. Okay, same hadith, meaning by same, 50 narrators, 40 narrators, mutawatir by meaning. Then becomes mashur, at every level, minimum, few people, minimum, few people, four, five people. Then had only, at some level, many people, at one level, only one. So all these are levels. Then there are criteria for Sahih Hadith. The most best is available in Bukhari and Muslim. And there are levels. Then there are levels of where did the Hadith reach? The highest is Hadith Qudsi. It is Allah, Prophet said, 
Allah told. So one Allah, the Prophet repeats Allah told so and so things repeated by Sahaba then a chain of narrators. So if it goes to Allah, it becomes Hadith Qudsi. There are very few. Then if it goes to the Prophet, it is Marfu Hadith. You know, going to the Prophet. Then Hadith going to the Sahaba, then going to the Tabain, then Tabi Tabain, different levels. So Allah has preserved the Quran also and preserved the Hadith also. To say that Allah hasn't preserved it, the Hadith is totally wrong. Yes, you may question me. Why is the preservation of Quran and Hadith not the same? Very good question. Because Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. Hadith could see the word of Allah but preserved in a different way. Then the Hadith of the Prophet, what Allah said to the Prophet, Prophet explained own words. Why? Normally when you go to school or to a college for study, there's a textbook. In geography, there's a textbook. In biology, there's a textbook. Textbook means main book, you have to read. Then there are guides. So Quran is like the main book, textbook. So minimum you have to read is the textbook. Those who want to score a lot, what they do? Beside textbook, they read the guides. Both are correct. But the guides are more voluminous. Now how many people of us have read the full Quran? Alhamdulillah, Arabic meaning wise how many? Majority of the Muslim have not read the full Quran meaning wise. Why? We are so busy. So you are not reading the Quran, where will you read the Hadith? So the reason Allah has kept a different level is Quran is the highest level. The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least read that. So when you go to the school, minimum those who want to just pass, they at least read the textbook. Those who want to get better marks, they read one guide. Those who want to get more marks, they read two guides, three guides. The more you struggle, the more you do jihad, the more you strive, the more marks you get. So those who want to just pass, they only in the Quran and following, Alhamdulillah, and the things which the other people tell, the scholars tell by the Hadith, you know it. If you want more marks, you want to go to Jannat Firdos, you study the Hadith, you do research on that, you read to more scholars, you listen to more scholars, you do more ibadah, you get a higher level, and you can keep on going. So Allah in His divine wisdom, according to me, not according to the Prophet, or anything, I believe Allah in His divine wisdom purposely made different. Because you cannot follow Islam without Hadith. There are some people who say, only following Quran is sufficient. Not possible. Quran tells you to pray. Quran doesn't tell you how many rakah to pray in Fajr, how many in Dohar, how many in Asar, how many in Maghrib, how many in Isha. So this is Allah's divine wisdom. That you have to follow Quran in Sayyid Hadith. You have to follow Quran in Hadith. In the Hadith, there are Sayyid Hadith, there are Zayf Hadith, there are Modu Hadith. In the Hadith, there are Maqbul Hadith. The Maqbul Hadith is divided into Sayyid and Hasan. Then there are Zayf Hadith. In Zayf, there are various categories. Zayf, Zayf, Jiddan. Then there is Maudu fabricated. So here Allah is testing you. Do you do research? You need it Hadith. Do you really identify whether it is Sayyid or Zayf? Okay, Sayyid you have to follow. In Sayyid, there are various categories I told you. Then Zayf Hadith. Then Zayf Jiddan. Then Maudu Hadith. All this is a test from Allah. Allah could very well have, when he kept the Quran verbatim, words are correct, letters are correct. He could have preserved Hadith also in that way. It is Allah's divine wisdom. He preserved both, but in a different fashion. And so that, yes, in the minor points, there may be some difference. In the major points, there is no difference of opinion. All the schools of thought say, there is five times Allah, how many rakat to pray. In other, there is difference so that Allah wants to check you. How much research you do? How much do you really strive to find out? As long as you are with the main jama. The Prophet said that amongst the Jews, there were 71 sects. In the Christian, 72. In my ummah, there will be 73. And only one will be on the straight path. The Sahaba asked, which one? He said, that that will be on the Jama. The other hadith says, that which follows me and my Sahaba. From here we come to the Jama, means the mainstream. And we know the mainstream. The mainstream, we have the four great Ahmad, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ibn the Humble. They are the mainstream. So when you have the mainstream, Ahle Sunnah wal Jama. They are the mainstream. You want the main? If you follow, Inshallah, you go to Jannah. You, can, you don't have to be like a Khawarij or a Mutazalai. These are the deviated sects. 
But the main jama'ah you are there, and little bit here or there, that is Allah's wisdom. The way he preserves. You have no Quran. You cannot say that, oh, I do not know. You have to follow everything. And Allah then is making it easy. Now you have the Jami Kamil. You read that. All the Sayyidis are compiled. You have the Bukhari, you have the Muslim, you have the Qutub al Sitta. So, depending upon your passion, depending upon your Jiddu Jihad, depending upon how much you want to strive, you will read the Hadith, Bukhari, Muslim, the Qutub al Sitta, Jami Kamil. So, Allah has preserved the Quran as well as the Hadith. The level of preservation differs, so Allah wants to test you. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mulchaf, chapter number 16, verse number 2, Allah has created death and life to test which of you is good, good indeed. So Allah is testing you. How good are you? How you are? Like in the example of Shaitan, Allah is testing you. How good are you? How you are? Like in the examination in the school, textbook is there, there are guides. So this I feel is the divine wisdom of Allah and this is my explanation why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved the hadith in a different level. Hope that answers the question.